The art of ambushing is the art of utilizing the element of surprise. If you play solo and you need to contend with the enemy team, especially against overwhelming numbers and with a lack of ally support, you want to pick out small fights with advantage instead of fighting the entire group head on. The honorable way is to fight on the point and on choke points, even while outnumbered. But this is not smart, because you're hoping for your allies to support you, and by doing so, you're putting your fate in someone else's hands. Instead of trying to play the numbers game and relying on your teammates, we can choose to fight dirty, and even use our teammates as bait to gain the tactical advantage, instead of just a brute numerical advantage. So how can you go and apply ambushing tactics to your gameplay? The idea is to take minimum losses while dealing the maximum damage at the right place at the right time. You need to be patient and observe the battle closely to set an attack when the enemy is least prepared for it. This is all very abstract, so let me go into the gameplay and show you. The enemy seems to be mostly made out of Grey Hairs, Palace Guards, and I saw a unit of Stalwarts. Now, knowing that they're all going to try attack A point, I'm going to come down here and see what I could do about it. This short sword comes in with his ultimate, but it really doesn't do anything other than stun my units for a few seconds. I mean, he tried to stop me, but I'm still going to ruin some people's day by using the Axe Raiders, Axe Throws, right into the enemy forces on the side, and they cannot retaliate at all. So what you see me do here is a small detail. I'm first going to press V to make the Axe Throwers throw at a position, and if I see that is a good place to throw, I then press 2, which is where the main portion of the damage comes from using that little trick and throwing a bit more axes to deal as much damage as I can, I finish off with killing uh, roughly 22 units. I lost absolutely no units at all, so I think that's a very good ambush. Now I'll use my Nightly Vows and Sprint Doctrine to increase their speed by roughly 40%. Let me talk about my setup of these Axe Raiders while they're on their way to the supply point. I've decked them out with the Bex Doctrines I have, focusing on their mobility and damage. Their skill tree is mostly bugged, so I'm going through a hybrid of top and bottom line to get a good balance of melee and range attack bonuses. With this setup, their max speed with Knightly Vow is quite absurd, almost the same as cavalry on the run. So with the speed, axe throwing capabilities, and the collision ignoring charge, the axe throwers are becoming my favorite unit due to their tactical potential and fun factor. Let's get back to point A and see what we can do. I can see a lot of heroes are trying to defend point A, but if you observe closely, there's actually no shield walls trying to hold the line. So I'm gonna assume it's gonna fail and slowly dwindle out. Well, my teammates at least. The enemy seems to have quite a numerical advantage, including some really good palace guards, which are charging in and gonna deal massive amounts of damage on the front lines. So I'm gonna stay on the sidelines and continuously gotta throw my axes until it depletes to deal just enough damage before maybe thinking about going in and attacking and helping my allies. But before that, this grey hair garrison group comes in and tries to take out my units. I quickly evade this, and I use my skills to, what do you say, trample through them and run to the other side. And now I'm going to use skill 2, the axe throw, to deplete their block and deal damage. We traded health and they are no longer in a position to continue fighting, but I still am. That's a very big win for me. So now I'm actually going to go back to the front lines and I'm going to find a right angle to charge in with my Axe Raiders. But as you can see, A point's lost. And my next goal will be try to protect B point and I'm going to move my units out of the combat zone. The Axe Raiders with their very good passive, which is a heal and increase defense and damage reduction, puts them above most other units in short brief combat skirmishes. They can take a lot of punishment and come back alive if you don't fight for these sustained fights. I come over the battle with Benny any losses, although all the kills I did was roughly peasants or low tier units. We really tried doing what we can in that situation, but without a good front line, A was destined to fall. But we still have point B, and on point B it's much more easier to defend, at least with my axe raiders, because there's so many flanking routes that you could pick and choose. And in order to use these flanking routes, the first thing I need to do is take care of these heroes around this area, and make sure this small path between the supply point and the bridge is secured without any enemies roaming around. But even before that, B point is being captured, so I'm going around a long way to see whether the enemy has their entire force on B point, or it's just one hero capping. And it seems like it's just one hero capping. So I go back to the flanking side path after I confirm the enemy's presence is not around to prepare for an ambush or lay a trap. 
So as I have confirmed, the enemies are not anywhere close yet. So I'm just gonna go around to the bottom of the bridge and see if I could snipe a cheeky hit or two. So I'm gonna try to use my double throw first, but unfortunately the aiming is really bad on this AI. And instead using X actually succeeds in hitting a few, although no confirmed kills. Now I'm gonna bring them back because I just observed an enemy force coming in. I'm gonna move around this back alley and see if I could get my chances to hit a unit or two. Okay, the palace guards charge in. I wait until they stop into position and then I throw my axes. This is because the axe throwers do not pre-aim and only aim at the last known position or when they start throwing it. Now I don't want to go in conflict with that short sword because if he does his ultimate, he could get his palace guards and delete my unit. Instead, I'm gonna wait his ultimate out and then bring my units to the back and then charge to utilize my unit's charging non-collision effect. Now I'm gonna use the skill 2 to deal a little bit of damage in the front lines and I'm gonna rotate back to this back alley and try to do the same maneuver again. What I see is two heroes attacking my ally hero so I try to support them by throwing a few axes but because the enemy has five heroes I'm gonna use the skill 1 and use the CC immunity charge to run back to the supply point. Although I did lose a few units, that is okay considering that there was 5 enemy heroes trying to wipe out my unit and it was actually quite lucky that I could survive that situation. Now with my unit back with some health, I'm gonna go in and try that again. Again, heroes on the back alley. I'm gonna use my axe throws to carefully persuade them to leave the area so I could recreate the flanking route that I like in this current position. I'm gonna use the one skill to try to knock the heroes down and before I go inside with the melee, I stop midway the charge and use the axe throw instead to deal hefty damage. I'm thinking about going back to supply point to resupply my ammunition, but I see a few horses running a rip out so instead I use my two skill to kill whatever horses are lagging around. But I only get to kill one or is it two because the axe raiders act have really bad throwing AI and you have to try to manually aim them in a way by timing them at the perfect time. Now with this flank secured again, I'm gonna go down and see what I could get. I try to aim at these grey haired garrisons but I see these imperial pike guards instead so I use a 2 ability to deal some damage. Now I'm thinking about going back to the position and shooting at the imperial spear guards from the back but this spear hero tried to attack my unit not knowing that my Sally 4 will absolutely obliterate him from the back and he has no chance in that situation. Now I'm gonna charge the Imperial Pike Guards from the back using the melee because I have no more ammunition and I'm gonna use a 2 skill because it has immunity to crowd control which is perfect in this current situation and because the Imperial Pike Guards chose to advance into the back our Grey Hair Garrison against their enemy Grey Hair Garrison 1v1 resulted in our victory and with the help of my allies, we secured point B on another enemy push. So that's another advance of the enemy that I took out, although with some casualty on my side. Now if you look at the timer, there's only 1 minute and a half left. I check on the gate on this side and there's no enemies. So I was confident in my situation to run out towards A point and see if I could take out any more stragglers but I was almost sure the game would end in 1 minute and a half. So you can see how I'm much more suicidal in my control of my units, trying to get them close to the enemy as possible and not really caring about the enemy units especially the palace guards which once on their brace completely wipe out my unit. Now unbeknownst to me at this point, the enemy actually took B. So I'm in a very strange position where I could fight this fight but it's better for me to actually die at this point because if I respawn, I'll respawn at a more closer position to my allies instead of risking walking all around to find a supply point and maybe getting trampled by the enemy marchers. So while waiting for the respawn counter, the next unit I'm getting is my trusty paladins. They are not as good as when they came out due to the lethal anti-charge units like the palace guards, Mordal or the grey hair garrisons being the meta staple right now. But if you play around with the strengths of the enemy, the paladins can still become a lethal unit. With flanking tactics in mind, if you get the paladins behind the enemy lines and charge from the back, they are still one of the best melee infantry shock troopers in the game right now. That being said, they are highly restricted in their role due to the more offensive units like the Modal or the Grey Hair Garrisons 
because they don't need to flank the enemy to get their damage output. Instead, they could just fight in the front lines and deal a massive amount of damage while retaining a high amount of defense. Let's get back into the gameplay. I have my paladins ready and I'm gonna move around the C point to see where the enemy forces are. And I'm trying to make my expectations of how the next battle will turn out to be. From B point towards C, I see only a few heroes without much units to back them up. So the main enemy forces will not likely attack from there. Whereas from the harbor, the enemy might be grouping up in large numbers, but because we don't have any heroes over there, we can't really see their advance. This is very problematic because if I can't understand where the enemy is, I don't think my allies would even have the ability to perceive this. Was well, even for me in this game, only now do I understand the enemy are all coming towards C and in large numbers. I try marking this on the minimap to see if my allies could react to this, but I think it's already too late. My allies are very lacking around C point, and the enemy is charging full head on into the C point. My abilities in this current situation is very limited. Having my paladins, that most I could do is either delay the enemies or see to 1v1 a good engagement with a badly placed enemy unit, which I am waiting to see if I could bait one out. And indeed, this unit of palace guards seems to have taken a bait, and now they're charging towards my paladins, or now the grey hair garrisons, to deal damage using their brace. I am now going to use this situation to go behind them and flank from there behind to get a very swift victory. Now I'm thinking about going down to C point to see what I could do, but before that let me finish taking out these Imperial Pike Guards. And when I finish, I see C point being captured by more than 2-3 heroes, and me being alone by myself, it's almost impossible to retake it. So the logical next step is to go back home and see if I could defend there. Because the enemy, although they have taken C point quite quickly, they are running on a limited time. So if we could just get one stable defense on home point, we should be able to win this game. So my paladins with full health, I see if I could find any early attackers that I could easily bait out and get into a one-on-one -on -one engagement. These palace guards seem to be the exact right target. They charge into my allies and now because they're braced, I move behind them to initiate a charge to wipe them out. Even though they tried using their shield bash, my paladins with their charge is way more than enough to delete them with the help of another palace guard unit. Now there's two minutes on the timer. Let's see what the enemy has. Was this gonna be one massive push if the enemy even wants to think about winning? The enemy has a javelin sergeant on the move and after they throw their shots, I think I'm just gonna go in and take out a few while they still have their ability on cooldown. I really only needed to attack them once or twice to just kill a few units. And after moving back to see the overall picture, which seems quite bleak for the enemy units, I go in for another quick skirmish to see if I could take out more units. And instead of taking more units, the small runs into my rank and starts dealing massive damage because of his ability to block break my paladins extremely quickly. And luckily for me, the only way to kill a mole is to have your mole on your side grab him. Which is a broken ability fighting another broken ability. Perfect balance. Now, next up is me going around to see what the enemy is gonna do next. They only have a minute and a half, so they must be going in full force. But we are denying them with our Imperial Pike Charges and everything else. For me right now, I'm thinking about holding my units back until I could heal one last time before the final showdown. But before that, I used my charge to kill these stalwarts which got into a very strange position. And unfortunately for me, taking out the stalwarts costed me a few of my units. Now after healing, I'm going to go after this Fordeo Brachio unit. Because on last point, this Fordeo Brachio unit might be between us winning and us losing if they got into point and start murdering our allies' heroes, which are the last line of defense. Killing and stalling their advance might be exactly what we need to succeed and win this game. With last few seconds on the timer, I'm gonna go in with my paladins, one last hazard charge, to see if I could stall the point and take victory home. And indeed, that is exactly what we needed. The enemy now cannot win because we stalled for just enough time to get below the threshold of 30 seconds, which is what we need if you want to take a point. 
and win. And now it's just the enemy's futile efforts to get a higher score on the ranking board. And that is the game. Although I did not get MVP, this game is more than enough to showcase how strong the Axe Raiders are. If you can use their ability to flank the enemy units and use your axes in the optimal situations. Now, one interesting thing that I want to point out at the end of this play screen. If you look at my score and the MVP of this game, which is the Mole, I have much more soldier damage and damage taken by my soldiers, but the Mole is MVP solely because he has dealt about half a million damage just as a hero against units. Not gonna complain too much because the balance of the mall is already a known issue, but it is still striking to me whenever I see something like this, and especially how often it does happen. And that is all I have for this video. If you enjoyed it, please add a like and a subscribe. This was Alan Apogi, and thanks for watching. See you in the next one.